When you think of the most popular character from literature for children, who do you think of? Think, think, think. Here's a clue. He's a bear. Winnie the Pooh. The stories about Winnie the Pooh and his friends in the Hundred Acre Wood have become beloved classics, translated into dozens of languages and adored by children around the world. For them, he's the lovable, huggable friend who shares their innocence and endless curiosity. For adults, Pooh represents the most admirable traits of childhood, a perception of a world filled with simplicity and beauty and the loyalty of a steadfast friendship. <laughs> Silly old bear. When Walt Disney began plans for an animated version of Winnie the Pooh in 1961, he realized that children in Britain and Europe were more familiar with these stories than children in America. If that was the case then, it is far from true today. Winnie the Pooh toys, games, and the cuddly stuffed animals are many a child's best friend. This is only appropriate, since that is how Winnie the Pooh came to be. This stuffed bear was a gift to A.A. A. Milne's son, Christopher Robin, on his first birthday. Edwin Bear was renamed Winnie the Pooh based on a Canadian black bear at the London Zoo named Winnipeg and a swan named Pooh. Mr. Milne was a successful author and playwright, and the friendship between Christopher Robin and Pooh was the inspiration for a set of verses for children. These stories also featured other characters from Christopher Robin's nursery, including the timid piglet, the ever-gloomy donkey named Eeyore, and the constantly bouncing tiger called Tigger. A frequent visitor to the Milne family's Sussex estate was English artist Ernest H. Shepherd. His affectionate sketches of Christopher Robin with his menagerie of stuffed toys were the perfect complement for the Pooh stories. In 1924, a. A. Milne's first verses were combined as a book, titled, When We Were Very Young. It was an immediate success in Britain, and would be the first of four Winnie the Pooh books that would be published over the next four years. The adventures in these books started out as bedtime stories told to Christopher Robin, but soon they were being read to boys and girls everywhere. A continent away, Walt Disney was one of those parents who fondly recall sharing these stories with their children. Back when Walt Disney's daughters were small, Mrs. Disney used to read stories to the daughters in the evening. She'd read them the Mary Poppins stories, she'd read them the Winnie the Pooh stories. And Walt Disney used to hear the laughter coming out of his children's bedroom, and he knew they were really enjoying these stories, and so he remembered that. Walt uh, called us one day and he says, uh, I have an idea about Winnie the Pooh. We ought to do that. Do you guys know Winnie the Pooh? And I says, well, I remember hearing about, <laughs> about this book, this story, when I was uh, stationed in, in uh, England during the war. And Walt says, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, this, these are good stories. We make a little, little feature out of these. Walt acquired the rights to the Winnie the Pooh books in 1961 and started plans for a musical animated feature-length film to be produced and directed by Disney veteran Wolfgang Reitherman. Wooly Reitherman was really the key factor behind these pictures. He, in a large way, was responsible for the art direction on it, too, starting with the book stuff, like having Christopher Robin swinging on the page with all the printing. So you're always aware that this is a book that the kids can read and something that they can get involved in. He had Walt's spirit in him, and Wooly never gave up trying to make things better. The talented songwriting team of Richard M. and Robert B. Sherman are renowned for their songs for Mary Poppins in 1964 and The Jungle Book in 1967. Walt personally enlisted them to work their magic for Winnie the Pooh. Dick and Bob were like a song and dance team. You know, they Dick would get on the piano and play a little, the little melody, you know, and uh, Bob would come up with a, a lyric to it. Dick was a real showman, and, and I think Walt really, really loved it. He never, ever wanted us to, in any of his projects, just write a song to be sung. He, he wanted a song to move the story forward. I 
just a little black rain and cloud. Walt wanted the songs for Winnie the Pooh to be eminently singable and very simple, and yet uh, try to be original and whimsical. The breakthrough came when our very first song, we knew we were going to write a title song. And so we decided to set the scene and make it very gentle and sweet. And it was kind of like a love song to this whole idea of being young and believing in little teddy bears and little piglets. And, and it went something like this. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, chubby little cubby all stuffed with fluff. He's Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, willy nilly silly old bear. Pooh, of course, was basically a honey lover. He loved to eat honey and guzzle lots and lots of good sweet things. And so he would exercise for different reasons. Try to build up his appetite. Yeah, he, he, he did it just for the opposite reason than, than we would do it. He wanted to put on weight, not lose weight. Thusly. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. When I up, down, and touch the ground, it puts me in the mood. Up, down, and touch the ground, in the mood. <laughs> for food. I am stout around and I have found speaking poundage wise. I improve my appetite when I exercise. For many thousands of people, the characters from the Winnie the Pooh stories were defined by Ernest Shepard's charming book illustrations. Walt realized the value of staying consistent with his audience's childhood memories of these tales and insisted that his artists adhere as much as possible to the original designs of the characters. Actually, there was a little bit of a conflict of whether we should use Shepard's uh, illustrations or come up with our, our own. Walt decided, no, we'd come up with our own design of Winnie the Pooh, not getting away completely from Shepard's illustrations, which are beautiful things, but uh, we had to make them Disney. Well, we all loved the Shepherd drawings when we started on the picture, and still do. But you can't take something like that that is drawn only in certain views. We have to be able to draw the character in every position, every view. So we had to design our own characters. We decided to keep the eyes flexible so that the character could close and open the eyes. They could raise their eyelids. They could move their mouth around and their cheeks a little bit so you get the feeling of an expression but they couldn't look like this around or up that way like Mickey could. We had to do it by turning the head and actually it was better because it made him look more doll-like. Walt was concerned that uh, they would have more charm than substance and uh, he wanted to be sure that we had, we captured the story, that we captured a strength in the characters so that they would exist on their own. They didn't rely on you having read the story. Once the designs of the characters were approved, model sheets were created so each animator had a reference for how the characters were to be drawn. And he's got a little, he's got a fairly big body here and, and uh, this is his little little red outfit here, little red dress. And the material itself is, is very delicate, very uh, uh, fragile in a sense. You don't want to make big guffaw laughs with, this, with uh, the material. It had to be done uh, very gently and uh, whimsically. Uh, who are you? I'm Pooh. Oh, Pooh. <laughs> sure. Uh, what's a Pooh? You're sitting on one. Winnie the Pooh is very straight. He's like a little child. He's just totally honest and says it just the way it happens, the way children do. They don't have any hidden meanings. Is anybody at home? No. Bother. Isn't there anybody here at all? Nobody. Somebody. Because somebody must have said nobody. Whoops. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, Piglet. Piglet's so sympathetic. He's so little. <laughs> And, and, and he's always trying to be such a nice guy and trying to get along, trying not to show that he's scared when he's up in the air uh, like a kite, you know. And, but he does get panicky, but he, it's always still a kind of a restrained thing. Oh, no. Stop. Hello, 
Rabbit. Rabbit. He was always frustrated. You know, he and he was just a worry ward about everything. Honey? Oh, no! I'm Tigger. T-I-double-G-R. <laughs> that spells Tigger. Tigger, of course, was always kind of fun because he was no cares in the world. He just went out there and he just did whatever he wanted to. And of course, he always got into trouble. And that was, that was fun. <laughs> Some bouncing, huh? <laughs> Say, how did this tree get so high? Hello, Mrs. Kanga, ma'am. Some of the traits I, I tried to bring to Kanga and Rue, which was the mother-son relationship, and trying to think of Rue as a five-year-old boy. Is your sweater warm enough? Yes, mother. We wanted to have, and Walt wanted to have, one kind of an American character that would also bring in the youngsters in America. And a uh, gopher is a, t a very American animal. <laughs> Somebody call for an excavation expert. Uh, I'm not in the book, but I'm at your service. A gopher. The name is McCard. There was an effort to make some, put some comedy in, and that was the, uh, the gopher. First thing to be done is uh, get rid of that bear. He's gumming up the whole project. It was very much like the badger in uh, Lady and the Tramp. In fact, it was a real takeoff of it. Uh, we were pleased with him, except that we were very nervous about it, because uh, after all, there are Pooh-ophiles. There are people that really adore Winnie the Pooh, in, particularly in England, and we didn't want to offend anyone. So Larry Clemens came up with this idea. He said, how about if he pops up out of a gopher hole and he says, I'm not in the book, but I'm at your service. Gopher's the name. I mean, it was just one of those wonderful, spontaneous things. And everybody said, absolutely right. I'm not in the book. Double meaning. Not in the phone book, but he's not in the A.A. A. Milne book either. Dash it all, he's gone. After all, he's not in the book, you know. To complement these characters, the overall art design for the film attempted to also keep the feel of Shepard's line-drawn backgrounds as well. Most of these chalk and watercolor concept pieces have never before been seen by the public. We started using backgrounds on 101 Dalmatians that had painted in flatter areas but had lines, ink lines, outlining the shapes. I think it was used to advantage on Pooh by just having the outline of the shapes in the background. The story to be animated is broken down shot by shot in drawings called storyboards. These allow the staff to study the flow of the story and to see where problems might exist. We had about two-thirds of what we considered a feature in storyboards. We were in development. Some parts of it were actually in animation, some of the early areas. Uh, but uh, we were not, we were just really uh, thinking in terms of a total uh, animated feature. And uh, one day we had this major meeting with all the people involved in the Winnie the Pooh project, and uh, Walt said, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to platform this property. We're not just going to put out a feature, because the American public, particularly the children, in America are not familiar with Winnie the Pooh at all. So actually what he did was he sectioned it into three sections. And so uh, we were all kind of like surprised and, and perturbed about it. We said, well, what, we, you know, featurette, why? And he says, you'll see. Once we have people aware of the Winnie the Pooh characters, the next time around it'll be much, much bigger. And it'll become classic. It'll become a masterpiece. You watch and see. Once the story and characters are approved, and before the animation can begin, the dialogue is recorded. <laughs> Casting the voices for this stuffed menagerie brought out many of Hollywood's most interesting voices. Walt always wanted this believable business. He wanted to transport the audience to some make-believe place that they could never go themselves. And that's what the right voice does for you. Oh, bother. Actor Sterling Holloway, who had provided the voice for the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland, was cast as Winnie the Pooh. To be in the same recording studio with Sterling Holloway was a great treat. I mean, the man was a consummate artist. I used to watch the way he performed. He used to underplay his lines. He would do them so softly and so easily. Oh. Hello. Am I glad to see you? It's more friendly with two. Sterling Holloway was just, well, I was going to say he was a teddy bear. <laughs> he was. He was, uh, he was like Pooh. He was the human version of Pooh. 
And Paul Winchell is just a genius. Incredible talent, whimsy, timing, all the things that, that require uh, a personality to bounce out of the screen, Paul Winchell has it. When he gave a uh, voice to Tigger, he really did something special. Hey, this is a cinch. You come in and you look at all the characters on the wall. You try to see whether you can match some kind of a voice quality to the pictures that you see. I was instructed that Tigger was a very exuberant kind of a character and that at the same time uh, he was a very humorous kind of a character. So I tried to put together uh, exuberant, which was a guy who was very excited, you know, all the time and uh, 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 just uh, <laughs> with his laugh and everything. <laughs> The thing that I enjoyed most about the character, I, I really can't put it into words, but I like Tigger. Uh, there's a certain quality that I feel that I became uh, identified with in my own mind, so that instead of just reading the lines, I would always ad lib. I would always throw in something, like I threw in one day that, well, TTFN, ta ta for now. <laughs> TTFN! for now. Howard Morris, who was a regular on TV's Your Show of Shows and played Ernest T. Bass on The Andy Griffith Show, provided the voice for Gopher. The Gopher was a character. We decided to give him a, a funny uh, characteristic and then he whistles through his teeth. It certainly is. I'm working the swing shift, you know. Ralph Wright uh, was one of the story guys and he had a real keen, deep voice. And we wanted Ralph to do the, uh, do the voice for... for uh, the donkey, and so we recorded it, so he is the voice of Eeyore. Thanks, it's not much of a tale, but I'm sort of attached to it. John Walmsley, who starred as Jason on The Waltons, was one of three actors who provided the voice for Christopher Robin. I was 12, actually 11, when I did uh, Christopher Robin, and uh, the character was basically me. Christopher Robin is a little English boy, and I was a little English boy. So I was basically playing myself at the time. Hello, Christopher Robin. Oh, thank goodness you're safe. Sebastian Cabot, who was familiar to American TV audiences as Mr. French on A Family Affair, was cast as the narrator. Now, honey rhymes with bunny, and bunny rhymes with, uh, rabbit. Other voices included character actor John Fiedler as Piglet. For a bear of very little brain, you sure are a smart one. And multi-talented Hal Smith, who played Otis on The Andy Griffith Show, provided the voice for Owl. Someone has pasted Piglet on my window. <coughs> well, well, who to? After the dialogue was recorded, the animators could begin the task of bringing the characters to life. Once the pencil animation was approved, the drawings were traced onto clear celluloids and painted. These were photographed against the hand-painted backgrounds, one frame at a time, to create the final footage. Here is a reconstruction of Tigger's song, tracing the evolution from storyboard, through pencil animation, to the final color footage. Ooh, the wonderful thing about Tigger, is Tigger's a wonderful thing. The chops are made of the rubber, the bottoms are made of the strings. The bouncy, trouncy, flouncy, pouncy, fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about Tigger's is I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Ooh, the wonderful thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are wonderful strings. The tops are made of the rubber, the bottoms are made of the strings. The bouncy, trouncy, flouncy, pouncy, fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about Tiggers is I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Buddy Baker wrote, arranged, and conducted the musical score to complement the songs written by the Sherman Brothers. As with Sergei Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf, Baker designed it so that different musical instruments represent each of the major characters. February 4th, 1966, Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree was released theatrically. Shortly afterwards, Walt started production on the second featurette, Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day. 
but he did not live to see the fulfillment of his prophecy about the popularity of the Pooh characters. Three years later, we put out the second Winnie the Pooh, which was the Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day. And it won the Academy Award. Not only did it win the Academy Award, it was a very, very, very successful feature. And Winnie the Pooh became like an established Disney character. I mean, he was as, as fully accepted around the world as any of the previous characters had been. Now, that was, in a sense, a tribute to Walt Disney, too, because it, was, it came out after Walt's death, of course. And uh, yet, it was something he had personally been very much involved with. So, although he wasn't there to supervise it, Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day was Walt's last great achievement. And now people refer to it as, as, as another Walt Disney masterpiece. In keeping with Walt's original intention, the first three shorts were combined into a full-length feature in 1977. Everybody involved in this property knew the end of the uh, feature was going to be Pooh and Christopher Robin saying goodbye. We never ever put it into any of the featurettes because it was too concluding, it was too ending. A few years later, they were going to do a longer version of Pooh, and then they were, were going to animate and complete the, the last sequence. It's very touching and very sentimental. It's a little boy saying goodbye to his childhood, his basic childhood. This was my first exposure to that story, and I didn't know what was coming. Got to that, and I'm reading this dialogue and just completely lost it. And that's what you hear in the show. And when I saw this as an adult, I thought, man, that's like the best scene I've ever done. Because it was totally real. You know something, Pooh? I'm not going to do just nothing anymore. You mean never again? Well, not so much. Pooh, when I'm away just doing nothing, Will you come up here sometimes? You mean alone? Just me? Yes. And Pooh, promise you won't forget me? Ever? Oh, I won't, Christopher. I promise. Not even when I'm 100? How old shall I be then? 99. <laughs> Silly old bear. The Disney has to be credited for bringing the popularity of of uh, Milne's story of Winnie the Pooh to the American public. There's certainly an honesty and an innocence to these Pooh characters. They aren't putting anything over on anybody. They don't try to put anything over on each other. They're very honest with each other. I think they believe in each other and care for each other. And I think that the kids could get a wonderful lesson from that, so can grown-ups. Pooh is the essence of childhood adventure, childhood imagination, a childhood uh, fantasies. It's the perfectly safe world. Everybody is nice. They're all characters. They're all peculiar. Rabbit's very fastidious and fussy, and Owl is a windbag. He talks all the time, but they're all lovable. They're all wonderful. And Pooh, of course, is a bear of very little brain, but he's all love. And it's safety, and it's it's purity and it's something I wish we all had more of in this world. We never will forget our hero of the witch, our quick thinking unsinking Pooh Bear. <laughs> and Pinklet who indeed helped out a friend in need, but truly they're the heroes of the day. So we say hip hip hooray for the Pinklet and the Pooh. So let's stop and singing and silly shenanigans. And generosity. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray for Winnie the Pooh.